Hello, my name is Carl. My call sign is Mike Zero Sierra Zulu Tango. It's getting easier to say now. It's been a few months since I've had this new call sign and the teeth are in now, so that's good news. For those of you who are eagle eyed, yes, I'm indoors and it's still still on lockdown, it's still frustrating. We're, we're still stuck in for the next uh, few weeks at least. <clears throat> I must admit, uh, staying indoors has not been the most exciting bit about the hobby for me. Uh, like, like I've said on previous videos, I much prefer to get outdoors and uh, just get a bit of fresh air, have a, a nice flask of tea in the, uh, the beautiful British rain. So in this video I just want to go over a few of the things that I've been doing this past couple of weeks that's just kept my engagement in the hobby up a little bit. It has been a bit low uh, since this lockdown. I I have found it a little bit difficult to um, be motivated to, to do much on the radio. However, uh, this past um, week, a couple of weeks, I've started to get a little bit of enjoyment again in the hobby so I want to just share some of the things that I've been doing and maybe help others who are equally a little bit bored of being stuck indoors just to keep their sanity uh, going for a little bit longer. So I like to just try out new things and break a lot of things and build a few things and repair them after. Uh, so I'm, I'm much more of a potter rather than a, an avid um, chatter on the radio so I've been pottering this past couple of weeks. One of the things that I have been doing that's been really interesting is actually setting the getting the sat nog system back up and running. So I've reused some of the Yegis that I'd already previously taken down from the outdoor rotator and, and built those back up again. So I've got a 70 sems and two meter little mini Yegis I've put onto a rotator and I've got a Diplexer, is it diplexer or duplexer? What's the difference between diplexer and duplexer? Please put it into the comments. So I've had a, a die duplexer as well to um, feed both of those um, through one single coax into the uh, into the room in here, and then I'm using an RTL SDR, so uh, they cost 20, 20 English pounds or something. So I use a Yaesu G450 rotator, which comes with a manual control box for the azimuth control but instead of that I'm using a MDS RC1G to actually control from the PC and uh, that uses a, a DCU1 uh, driver for that so I've got that plugged into a Raspberry Pi here with the RTL SDR dongle so 20 quid dongle and the rotator and the PC unit as well and then I've also stuck on, for the moment, I've got a, a tiny, very cute little three and a half inch uh, display screen. I'm, I'm going to swap that for a seven inch screen later on today so we get a better idea. So I'm running the Satnox client on the Raspberry Pi, <clears throat> uh, but I'm also running the Satnox monitor on top of that so I can actually display all of the observations and the scheduling that's that's been and uh, all the jobs that are on my Raspberry Pi will show up on the screen. So once I get a better screen, then I'll have a better idea of what jobs have been sent to this station. And then I c eventually I'll have this nice little screen with the Raspberry Pi and the SDR dongle, and I can fit that onto the wall or onto the back of the desk. And that'll just run itself quite nicely sitting on the back of the desk. So I've just been messing about with that getting the Satnogs station and monitor all set up on one device and that's a really really interesting project to get involved in and uh, not only are you contributing to uh, an open source project and uh, collecting observations on a lot of amateur satellites but you're also doing a lot better programming skills and you're also learning a, a lot about the ham lib library and how to understand the serial uh, serial data as well. So that's the Satnogs, that's been interesting to get that back up and running again. Um, and the next thing I've been doing is using the slightly older uh, Raspberry Pi. I've set up Direwolf on that. So I've got Direwolf running on this second Pi and I've got that working with the Icon 9700. So I've got a temporary um, iGate and a digi repeater 
that I run when I'm sitting here mostly inside the inside the room and uh, that's fun to uh, have running on occasion I can't really run the it's quite obvious really but I can't really run the APRS system and the sat nogs at the same time because if I've got a if I'm recording an observation of a satellite and it happens to be in the VHF band then when I'm sending out APRS packets I'm uh, causing mayhem to the sat nog so I have to just be careful of collisions between running the two systems so direwolf again it's a uh, um, Raspberry Pi's are only 20 odd 30 pounds now and direwolf is free uh, open source and with a little bit of cabling and a little bit of a uh, little bit of time you can have a lot of fun with the APRS system and that's you know well worth a little bit of time to play around with and it's a great way to uh, you know to to keep VHF activity up if if you're like me and you don't always like chatting away about uh, the virus and about people um, breaking out of lockdown or whatever it is that, that people talk about a lot on the VHF if you're not into that kind of stuff then at least you can put the equipment to uh, some more fun use as well and something else that you may have heard uh, tinkering away in the background is I'm running um, JS8 call uh, so it's one of those modes that I use for a little bit and then I don't use and then I I regret not using it because it's a fantastic uh, digital mode the keyboard to keyboard chat and positioning it's 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 the mix of all the good things of APRS whisper and FT8 all rolled into one so uh, like I said the other week I was talking about FT8 being a fantastic mode and um, not just for uh, getting QSOs and filling your logbook up but FT8 is a very practical mode for just getting information around propagation and, and, and the like well JS8 is equally as good as well around um, uh, sending out heartbeats and re replying to heartbeats and then you can have the uh, you, know, you can do the APRS uh, positioning on there as well if you're out and about and uh, as well as doing the keyboard to keyboard chat so <clears throat> JS8 calls has helped me to keep a little bit sane this past uh, couple of weeks so there's been you know a, a little bit of activity going on here so i've also built well when i say built i've constructed a six meter and four meter moxon there uh, i've had that up and running it's tuned in i've had a few contacts because it's not quite the season yet and it's only it was only in the back garden uh, up about three or four meters but i've got a few local contacts into wales and and around the around the uk on that on six meters during the summer I'll get that up for a few weeks and see what we can catch from here but ideally I'd like to take it out portable with me but uh, I've got a small car and it's a, it's quite a size of a antenna and one thing I haven't tried yet is see if it fits neatly into the car I hope so if not I'm going to be really embarrassed about that so we'll do a, a, a video of me fitting the moxin inside the car that'll be fun so I've got the moxing up and run, running. Um, I just had to get a prop. I've also I've also bought the um, one of these a uh, satellite cross um, du dual band Yegis. Obviously, I haven't got the um, seventy cent elements in because I'm just storing this in here for the moment. But this eventually, I I want to get outdoors with either the 9700 which is ideal for satellite work or even try and fashion something together the 705 and do a little bit of chasing out and about on the on the satellites i have tried to do a little bit of chasing in the back garden but because i live with all houses around me when i was pointing the antenna up you know, up and around people if if you look through the your bedroom window all you can see is me pointing a big antenna at you in your bedroom window you're going to feel a bit freakish so i've not been doing much chasing in the back garden for obvious reasons so that's it that's the end of my rambling i am um, sorry that my video output is 
it's not as often as, it, as I, would, I would like, but uh, like I said before, I'm not an indoor radio person. I'm not a kind of person that just has the, the camera fixed in one position. That's just not my not my style. I like to wave it about a little bit and get outdoors. So as soon as I can do that, the video content will go up as well. So thank you for uh, being patient and uh, look forward to the next video. So bye-bye for now.